Welcome back everybody to our RTS series where we attempt to make a full-blown RTS with ECS um, or at least try to. <laughs> uh, in, in this part we're going to continue where we left off where we um, we created our axis allied bounding boxes and next is going to be uh, detecting collision, dealing things with that, and we're going to talk a little bit about burst and what the burst compiler um, or how it can give us boost at least. Um, I won't dive in too much because Unity has better technicals than that, but I will just kind of talk about how it applies to us and, and basically how to use it. Uh, so a, a couple things that I did um, off screen um, to not waste time is I changed the camera and um, uh, that's pretty much it actually. So uh, what I did was change the position to 10, 33, and 17. I rotated by 60 and we're using perspective uh, with a 40 field of view. Uh, there was no real reason for this I just felt like it was easier to um, see the units here. Um, yellow is not really an easy color as well I'm gonna probably change that to like a dark blue uh, because as you as you'll see once we start uh, spawning more than 50 units uh, it starts becoming a little bit of an eyesore to have all these yellow in the perspective view. So. Uh, that was the real reasoning, but um, if you wanted to leave it the other way, I, this code will totally work for that. Uh, there's nothing that. So, uh, actually, let me get to the mat, and I'm going to change it to blue. Uh, but other than that, uh, there was no real big changes there. So, um, so what we're going to do with um, our collisions is we're actually just going to use the naive approach, which is just a simple comparing all of them against each other and seeing if any of them overlap. Um, we're not going to do any kind of spatial partitioning. Um, I, I don't really see the need to go deep into that. Uh, reason being is Unity is going to come out with their own collision and we're going to have to most likely want to use all their stuff anyways. So uh, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to do that right now. But, um, but don't worry. This one is going to work for, uh, we're going to make like about 300 entities so don't worry about like um, will this work short term this will totally work for right now um, and you can look up spatial partitioning if you want to kind of dive into what that is and whatnot so uh, I just pasted from my sample repository that, that is always attached to the description of my videos um, and we're gonna just kind of talk through it um, it's it's much easier than me talking and kind of fumbling through the code so what we have here is a struct, and we have this new um, API. It's a iJob chunk. If you've seen all the other systems, we, we've gone through component system, we've gone through iJob process component data that allows us to filter. iJob chunk, what that does, it allows us to access the underlying structure that processes iJob process component data. So. Basically, this is you use this as the default. You always want to use this because it's it's clean. Uh, you have only a certain archetype you want to grab, and then you just go in and process it. If you if this doesn't work for your system, let's say you need multiple chunks or whatever, then you need to use iJob chunk. Uh, and we can get in a little bit more of what that means later. But everything else is relatively the same. Uh, you have your execute. Um, the signature is a little bit different. You have an archetype chunk, uh, chunk index, and first entity index. Um, but otherwise, everything else is relatively the same. You make a job and stuff. So let's start with the on update because that might <coughs> uh, that might clear things up. So we grab we grab our colliders, which is our it's a native array of our axis aligned bounding boxes, uh, and we grab it from this AAB group that I made on Create Manager. Uh, and so on this on create manager we make this entity archetype query uh, where you have three options you have all uh, let's see if it shows any and then none so you have those three options and they kind of do what you expect all means that every everything that this gets queried all of them have to have this um, and you can have multiple you can have as many as you want in this array any which means it needs to have at least one of those components and then none which is supposedly the in inverse of all which means that it cannot have any of those uh, specified components so 
So I want to grab anything that has um, an AABB. Uh, I don't want anything else because we could have buildings, we could have other things that might not, um, you know, we, I was thinking about putting position, but the reason I didn't was because if we had some kind of invisible areas we wanted to block, then uh, we just wanted this A, B without a position or something. So uh, that's that's how I get this query. And then we just do get component group query. Uh, and actually, the last thing with this is you can have multiple queries in here, and they all can be you know, ORD, so to speak, or however. Uh, there's more in the docs on that, which I will link in the description. So that's what this first one does. Then we create the job like normal, uh, which is the job up here. And then we schedule it. And the interesting thing is in, in this system, we didn't have to complete it. We could just schedule and return that. With this one, we actually have to complete it um, because we will dispose the handle and or sorry we will dispose our colliders and then we will return the collision job handle now I know there's a lot that um, a lot of new things that we're covering right now like this native array that we didn't have to do before dispose but um, I'll, I'll probably make another video just explicitly talking about native array because there's a lot of things for native container but just know that if you do allocator temp job or allocator temp uh, then you will need to call this uh, dispose if you call persistent oh, well, I, I guess we'll just go over it right now so persistent means it will it will last until you explicitly call dispose temp means if you only need it for uh, the single frame oh, consequently this is the fastest and then temp job is if you need it within the the last the next four frames uh, which is the second fastest and also the most job friendly so that's why I have it there um, so that is the on update and now we can get into what exactly the collision job does nothing fancy here um, I just as you saw we just uh, declare a public array um, access align bounding boxes we make it read only so that this can run in parallel um, because we're not actually changing the colliders uh, that means other jobs will be able to access this while this is running so that's kind of a nice thing to always put read only and you see we add our colliders which is our native array we just send it into the job here uh, I don't actually use any of these but you can if you need to actually access the, the, t the chunk that each of these colliders are in then feel free to use that I didn't need it for my uh, my use case and basically we just go for each collider iterate through all the other colliders and as long as it doesn't equal itself uh, check if and remember in the previous video we had our RTS physics intersect where we'll just go to that real quick uh, go to definition uh, this is from the Mozilla documentation where we just check the mins and maxes of each of the boxes on each three of the axes nothing fancy there and uh, we just basically check if I and J collide and if they do we run a collision occurred and uh, that, that's pretty much it so what would happen in the future is if you want to do spatial partitioning a, a super high level algorithm is basically uh, instead of running it for each you you define a grid uh, for your world space and basically each of the cells know what entities are in that cell and you only you can run the computation on each individual cell basically so if there's you know one all the way in the top left of the map doesn't really need to be checked by the one all the way in the bottom right so you do get uh, benefits that way but I'm not gonna do that for the for the sake of brevity so I'm actually adding a new section to the video um, on the unity forums um, and other documentation online uh, there's this optimized way to do it more so than when you do it this double loop there's a lot of overlapping blocks if you do it with pen and paper you'll realize that uh, this when you get to the second cube the first cube has already checked one and two if they overlap so this is really inefficient um, and this gives another uh, chance to learn a new api called ijob parallel 4. so if we go to ijob parallel 4 documentation uh, they have um, it allows you to perform the same independent operation 
for each element in the native container or fixed number of iterations. Uh, so basically this is this works really well for what we need because we only need to check the collision once. Basically, we only need to iterate through all colliders and check if it's colliding with anything. We don't need to check if, once we check like, you know, zero to one, we don't need to check one to zero, so to speak. So we can just comment this. And I'm gonna change this I job chunk to I job parallel four. And it uses a different signature because we're not dealing with chunks anymore. We're dealing with individual entities within the uh, within the within the native array so since we're just going through each one we just all we have to do is check the one in front of it and go up to the, the length of the collider and then we just check if the intersect and it's detected so you see this double loop this drastically reduces the no the number of computations we need to do uh, and then the last thing is for schedule if we go back to the documentation, uh, we do have to give it a byte down here. Uh, so when there's very little work, 32 or 64 makes sense. So I'm just going to do 34. And so we go here. This is what I commented out. At, or rather, comment this one out. Uncomment this one. I pick 32. And I just provide the collider's length that we made already. So that's all you need to do. And now this is, uh, oh, and leave the burst compile, because that, that's what makes it super duper fast. Um, I'll show it once with the string and then without the string. With the string will cause the burst error. So we press play. And we just go, and we can see our collisions are detecting. And we just do randomized noise, and we have all these once being detected, and I won't and it, I won't show the uh, the speed on that one due to the burst compiling not actually working. But if we go back here, press play. Now, when we were doing our I job chunk, it was at 0.50 milliseconds for all the uh, collisions that we were detecting. If we go back to the entity debugger, we're hitting around 0.2. So, bit of a squeeze, but uh, when, when you start dealing with much more than just 200 entities, uh, you'll definitely feel that performance gain ac across all stuff. So this was just a small section, and we'll be able to get back to the rest of the video. Uh, and you now you can choose between iJob Parallel 4 and iJob Chunk, depending on what you need. Collision is looking good. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do, I have my notes, that's why I keep track of it, uh, is to change our spawner. So right now we just have two unit spawners in the, in the in the scene and they're just kind of like far off with each other uh, I don't really like that so I'm gonna delete this one and we're just gonna have this one 00, zero. Uh, we'll just leave it at 15 and then basically um, that was 0 0.5 and then we're just gonna repeat it 15 times and then destroy the system so everything else is just gonna stay the same we're just gonna loop it so I'm gonna copy and paste from our sample project uh, that's always on github and let's just do that so as you can see we just have this i and j for a uh, double for loop everything else is the same except these two new lines where we multiply by the x-axis two times i this is just to get me a nice uh, number to keep them equidistant from each other this will go in the horizontal axis and this will go on the vertical axis uh, or rather the, the back 3d axis so to speak Everything else is the same, and then we destroy the manager at the end of this double for each loop. And now we can go in and test. And we should see that um, the collision detected, uh, as you can see, I was previously testing down there. Um, we'll have, it should show up once we have any of these boxes overlap each other. So, whoops, the scene is off. Let's just change that to zero, and then all right, we're gonna do some on-the-fly changes. So we're just gonna change the x a little bit to 15, 30, and then like that, and copy this component. <laughs> I'm actually just going to paste that, paste components values. Okay, 
So now we should be good to go to see all our new boxes. Uh, if we look in the entity B debugger, we see we have 225 <laughs> entities. So we know that all the uh, access aligned bounding boxes are working. It's running at 14 milliseconds. And then if we run them through all this occasional current, it's kind of hitting 20 milliseconds, which is actually kind of small, right? I mean, I mean, a lot, uh, given that, you know, we're not really doing anything right now uh, com relative to the other systems. So our collision is, is going well. It works. Um, by the way, we should celebrate about that. <laughs> um, so that, that's good. That, that's what we need right now is the collision occurred. Uh, in the next videos, we're going to start using these collisions. But I, I wanted to cover uh, one thing, which is burst. And um, I don't want to go too in depth technically on, on why it's good. Uh, I'm just going to show this nice cheat, which you, if you go to the collision system and you disable burst. Now, when you do burst compile, you can't have any uh, managed objects. So any mono behaviors, string actually counts as a managed object. So this will throw an error. Feel free to try it if you don't believe me. And um, so we're, we're going to have to eliminate that, but we do know I wanted to leave that because we do know that the collisions are happening. So in the future, we don't need to worry about that because we'll have things actually happening. But if we go to the entity debugger, once we press play, we'll see that this system has drastically been reduced to 0 0.50 milliseconds. It was running around 20 for only 255, 225 entities. And if we just have a couple of them going processing, uh, this is barely moving. So you definitely want this to be bursted. Um, it's super easy to add. It's just this burst compile. Um, there's a lot of good stuff Unity has on why bursting is good and things like that. If you guys want me to cover it, um, feel free to, but there's already a lot of good documentation out there and kind of save me having to kind of reinvent the wheel there. Um, and then that's pretty much it. I, I kind of wanted to cover this video because there was already a lot of packed APIs in this and I didn't want to kind of overstuff, kind of give you guys some homework for next time. <laughs> and, um, and yeah. Uh, next next one we're actually probably going to cover upgrading our package it seems like they've changed component data wrapper uh, so you can see there's some there's some updates here entities and hybrid renderer uh, we're gonna do a bunch of api changes so uh, that should be fun hopefully everything we can get working pretty quickly but thank you thank you for watching and hopefully you've been liking these videos like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video